we have some terminology for the muscles. First is reflect. This means to move away the muscle so we can see its underlying structures. Next we have origin. This is the end of the muscle that's fixed during movement. This is usually the proximal end. Insertion, usually the distal end, is the portion of the muscle that moves during contraction. We have innervation. This means nerves are going through the tissue. Agonist is the main movement of the muscle. We have an antagonist, which opposes the main action of the muscle. We have a synergist, which goes along with the main action of the muscle, and those are all relative terms. So no one muscle is an antagonist, agonist, or synergist. We refer to them on a relative basis. So the long head is a synergist to the short head of the bicep, and the triceps are antagonists to the biceps. Then we have flexion. This decreases the angle. We have extension, which increases the angle. We have adduction, which moves limbs towards the midline, and abduction, which moves limbs away from the midline. We have pronation, which is like this, turning the palms down, and supination, turning the palms up. This is a model of the head. Here we have the frontal belly of occipital frontalis. Here we have the occipital belly of occipital frontalis. Connecting the two is the epicranial aponeurosis. In this lab, we'll call this superficial structure the temporoparietalis. However, these two could be called the auricularis superior, the auricularis anterior, and the auricularis posterior. On the face, we have the corrugator supercilii muscle, this eyebrow muscle. We have the procerus between the eyes. We have the orbicular, orbicularis oculi, which are these muscles. It's made up of two parts, the orbital part and the palpebral part. And then on top of the nose, we have the nasalis. There are two regions of this, the transverse part and the aller part. Here we see the transverse part. And then we have the zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major. This muscle right here that's cut is the risorius. Here we have the orbicularis oris going around the mouth. And we have two muscles that we'll call together the levator labii superioris. This one specifically would be called the levator labii superioris lak nasi muscle. Then we have the depressor anguli oris, this triangular muscle here. And then we have the depressor labii inferioris, this one here. We have the mentalis coming from the mental protuberance. And then we have the buccinator on the side here, deep to the zygomaticus major and the risorius. And then we have a muscle on the side of the head that would cover all of this, can't be seen on this model, coming from around here all the way across the neck called the platysma. So on this model we have the superficial side and the deep side where the superficial layers are cut away. First we have the temporalis originating at the temporal bone inserting at the coronoid process of the mandible, should be down here. Then on this side we have the masseter, originating at the zygomatic arch, inserting at the ramus of the mandible. And if we flip back, we have the medial pterygoid right here, which is originating at the pterygoid process, inserting at the ramus of the mandible. And then this cut muscle is the lateral pterygoid, originating at the pterygoid process again, inserting at the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. And then we can see the digastric, right here. This is the anterior belly of the digastric originating at the mental protuberance inserting at the hyoid bone and then we have the posterior belly of the digastric, this one this one that's more posterior of these two originating at the mastoid process inserting at the hyoid bone Then we have the stylohyoid that's this muscle right here, the anterior of these two originating at the styloid process of the temporal bone inserting at the hyoid bone and we have the mylohyoid, it's this under chin muscle right here, originating at the body of the mandible, inserting at the hyoid bone. 
Then we have the omohyoid. This is the superior belly of the omohyoid, originating at the superior border of the scapula, inserting at the hyoid bone. And then we have the sternocleidomastoid right here, originating at the manubrium and the clavicle, inserting at the mastoid process of the temporal bone. On the posterior side of the head, or on the posterior neck, we have the trapezius right here. And then with the trapezius cut away, we have the splenus capitis right here. And then a little inferior to that, we have the levator scapula muscle right here. And we have a group of muscles, a little bit, you can barely see them at the very bottom here, which are called the scalenus muscles. We can't see the sternothyroid or the thyrohyoid on these models, so we don't test for them, but those both go to the thyroid. Here we have a couple models of the chest plate. We'll be looking at a few terms on each of them. First, we'll start with this model. On the back, we have the diaphragm coming right here. This is the muscle you use to breathe. It's this muscle right here. And then we'll be moving on to a different model of the chest plate. Here we have intercostal muscles. They're between the costals or the ribs. So right here we have external intercostals with striations going down this way. Then we have internal intercostals with striations going up this way. We can see the same thing on this model. Striations going down external, internal intercostals. Then we have the rectus abdominis. Those are these muscles. Then we have the external obliques right here, the internal obliques over here. And then if we flip this over, we have the transversus abdominis muscles right there. And then we have the linea alba separating the rectus abdominis muscles vertically and the tendinous inscription separating the rectus abdominis muscles horizontally. Then we have the pectoralis major right here, here on this model. And then we have the pectoralis minor, shown here on this model, here on this model. And then we have the serratus anterior, right here. These are the digitations of the serratus anterior. And then there's a muscle beneath the clavicle called the subclavius. Here we can see another view of the subclavius muscle right underneath the clavicle. This model here, we can see another view of the serratus anterior muscles right here. We can also see the trapezius right here, the deltoid here. And if we look closely, we can see the three layers of the external obliques, internal obliques, and transversus abdominis. We also can see the psoas major and the iliacus. We have this model of the back. We have the trapezius, this large kite-shaped muscle here. Let's remove the trapezius. And we can see the splenus capitis muscle here, the levator scapula here. And we have the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. These are on the appendicular muscles as well. Then we have the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. Major is this big chunk down here, minor is this little bit up here. And then right here we have the latissimus dorsi muscles coming around the sides.